ABC 27 News at 5 starts now with your forecast first with meteorologist Addis Euclo. And good evening. What an incredible last few days of weather. We had sunshine, low humidity, temperatures near 80 degrees. Now we're still kind of in that transition. We're seeing some light sleet, couple of flakes, but we're also starting to see some really heavy bands. I mean, we go closer to Front Street and it's already now starting to pick back up. And I'm talking about large snowflakes. And uh, even at our station in uptown Harrisburg, it was snowing very heavily just about 15 minutes ago. Tropical moisture that's over Florida right now is not likely to turn into a tropical storm. You know, once we head into late October and November, it becomes increasingly difficult to get a storm closer to home. And that's because we have a lot more in the way of wind shear. So wind shear, remember, is the changing of wind with height. 90 degrees back in the forecast by next Monday. Mm, so summer not over yet. Summer is not over yet. We can still see heat waves even into September. Mm. This will be one of the first places to see flakes flying this morning. We're not seeing it quite just yet. There is still some dry air that this precip needs to overcome, but it's certainly cold enough to snow. Temperatures are in the 20s, but notice that dew point still in the teens. We need that to come up just a little bit. Lots of trees down over this section of Lancaster County, especially some widespread damage right here in Denver. And these folks are now looking for somewhere else to stay while they get some federal assistance as well. We'll send it back to you in the studio, James. We're heading down toward Chambersburg and we are still seeing some of that drizzle. Temperature, at least uh, based on our car, is right around the freezing mark, hovering anywhere between about 30 and 32 degrees. Now, obviously in this kind of setup where you have very light precipitation, borderline temperatures, you're not going to see major issues on the highways. You know, average high this time of the year is now in the low 60s. So and we're gonna be, be honest, you're not happy. I didn't say that. <laughs> you know, James thinks that I just hate warmth and sunshine. Yeah, I like it. Big flakes coming on down. It is breezy and it is hard to see much behind the field there in Upper Dauphin County. Now you can see the bands are really starting to fill in now across the viewing area. We're only at a trace right now. If we don't get any measurable snow by the end of the week, that'll put us in historic territory. Only two other February months have seen a trace of snow. Anytime you get the temperature this low, even the slightest of wind can make it feel colder than it actually is. So we do have a real field temperature of eight in Tower City, four in Lancaster, pulled out all the dance moves to put a smile on his son's face. And those moves are going viral. ABC's Tom Yamas tells us something good. They have found winds of 130 miles per hour and the pressure continues to fall and that plane continues to investigate. So we'll see if there's any further upgrades that will hit Cancun tonight. In 2005, we set the record for total number of tropical systems systems at 28. So far this season, we're at 27 with still several more weeks to go in hurricane season. That's going to be the big story today. Okay. Yesterday, we still managed to get back close to 70. We're going to be lucky if we break into the low 50s this afternoon. It's going to be right. that kind of day today. Cloudy. There will be some light showers that move in this afternoon. No rain just yet. So summarizing what you can expect today between about now and three o'clock. Any sleet is going to change back over to snow as we see the intensity of the precipitation pick on up and it will come quickly. This is a loop only going back the last two or three hours. So at times this line has been moving east at around 90 100 miles per hour. Mm. Friday doesn't look great either because mm. it's not only going to be cooler, but there could be a 15 to 25 mile per hour wind. OK, uh, 2005 from four storms, we picked up over six inches while this year we picked up over four inches from five named storms. It's only moving at about two miles per hour. Now think about that. Most of us can walk faster than two miles per hour, so it is just crawling. Some drying starting to show up there in the upper levels. We're going to slowly clear out and go from an overcast sky to mostly cloudy. If we could get storms to fire up, they were going to rotate rather easily. Just because they're rotating does not mean it's producing a tornado, but of course it's something we just got to keep a very close eye on. Bigger storm of concern right now is this one moving into western Juniata County, moving southeastward. This was a thick, heavy, wet snow that fell today, and now there is a glaze and I should say even layer of ice on top of that snow. Live from the ABC 27 Digital Now Center, this is Beyond the Forecast with your most accurate local meteorologists. And welcome into the Digital Now Center, everybody. I'm meteorologist Satis Uclo here to talk about tonight's rain that we're going to get from, uh, believe it or not, the remnants of what was Hurricane Delta. I've been in camera, some of the side streets there as the yeah. intensity picks up. That's when we start to see a fresh coating of snow on some surfaces. So places like Franklin County, Adams County, you're going to see that bulk of the rain fall earlier than places to the east and northeast of Harrisburg. But through tomorrow afternoon, everybody's going to catch up with rainfall amounts 
generally again between one and two inches. It does look like we have a, another burst of snow that's just starting to form pretty much right over the heart of the viewing area. So you can see from Perry County extending south right at the end of that frame right there. Coryville down further south. That's where we had some reports of even up to six inches of rain and it really is mostly across Lancaster County where we had some flooding report. Even though the, the center is now well inland, you were still seeing a lot of these bands feed on northward. So places that have been seeing rain since last night are still seeing a lot of rain right now. That is for central and eastern Lancaster counties. That's because in some places it can still take a little bit of time for the waters to recede. So uh, Perry County, Juniata County, you're getting the worst of the activity right now. So if you're watching us from Thompson Town near Mifflin Town, looks like just northwest of Newport. And we do have a storm report that's just come in from Huntington County of thunderstorm wind damage. Numerous trees reported down on Covered Bridge Road. What we are looking at here is velocity. So where you see this uh, bright red signature, that is wind moving this way. Where you see the greens and the grays there, that's wind moving as we call inbound. So the tornado would be right in there. So basically this circulation is now centered just to the east of Halifax. So all these counties here shaded in pink, that's a severe thunderstorm watch. So the entire mid state remains in a severe thunderstorm watch through this evening. That means be on guard. The conditions are there to support a few severe thunderstorms directly southeast toward places like Tower City. So putting a track on that here, uh, fear not Sacramento Tower City gold mine. This tornadic thunderstorm is moving in your direction. If you live anywhere in northern Dauphin County and western Lebanon County, so basically Jonestown points west, you want to make sure that you're in a safe place. Whitetail Resort in Mercersburg, Franklin County is a popular winter destination for not just those of us in Pennsylvania, but even those south of the Mason-Dixon line. Even though winter has been a little lackluster, it hasn't stopped families from making the hours long drive to hit the slopes. OK, there you go. There's nothing skiers like more than Mother Nature's snow, followed by consecutive cold, dry days. Sadly, in central Pennsylvania, our winters are far from perfect. If you get like a real wet, warm weather spell and then it gets cold again, that makes it challenging. It's more like ice skating. It seems like there's definitely been a decline in the, uh, the amount of snow we've been getting in the past few years. But with the challenges come opportunity. Snow making at resorts like Whitetail has gotten more sophisticated with hundreds of low energy snow guns that allow for more aggressive snow making and a faster rebound from poor conditions. So the water goes into the gun. Some of them have onboard compressors, which creates the water pressure. Some of them, there's another the whole channel of pipe that is that is uh, sending pressurized air to the to the snowmakers as well. Combination of those two things hitting the air, pressurized water hitting the air creates snow. The snowmaking team pays close attention to the wet bulb temperature, a value also important to meteorologists. It considers the effects of both temperature and humidity or the dew point. When moisture falls into cold dry air, it initially evaporates, which acts as a cooling mechanism. This cooling continues until the air is fully saturated, hence why it becomes cold enough to snow. The drier the initial air, the lower the wet bulb temperature. We like to have a wet bulb temperature in the 20s or below. We can start making snow at a wet bulb of about 28, which typically will correspond with a below freezing temperature. The strategy is simple. While the conditions are right, take full advantage, even if it's during the day. It's not always the ideal scenario to be making snow on our guests, but when we're in these sort of scenarios where we're still trying to open terrain and to be able to give our guests the best experience possible, we're going to continue to make snow so that we can be here through those periods when we do have temperatures that are into the 30s and 40s. Since 2010, all but two Decembers have featured above average temperatures. 0.2 inches of snow fell in December 2018 and 2019 combined. However, in March, seven of the last 10 were below average when it comes to the temperature. This shift has given hope to those who haven't been able to ski much in December. So it takes us a little more time to get to 100%, but we enjoy that 100% much longer into March than we have. And spring skiing is a fantastic thing to, to have longer days and warmer temps. The first half of February should bring improvements to the ski season as we transition to seasonable temperatures and a more active wintry pattern. For ABC 27 News, I'm meteorologist Atisuclo.